Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we're going to be sewing up a rain jacket. This is a project that I've been wanting to do for at least a year now. Uh, I mentioned it last spring and just never got around to it so now we're back into the early bits of spring and it's raining a whole bunch and it would be nice to have a raincoat but I want a special raincoat because I work so hard on my dresses that I really want to be able to see them and not cover them up. So today we're going to be making a clear raincoat using some vinyl material that I picked up at my local fabric store. So I'm really excited to get into this. I've never done anything like this before and so I'm really hopeful that it turns out well but if it doesn't then you guys will be along for the ride to see how it turns out and then maybe you'll have some ideas on how you might fix it if you decide to make a project similar to this one. If you haven't done so already please like and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more videos similar to this one. Also, I have a Patreon now, so if you'd like to see more of me, go ahead and join. It is just a $4 a month subscription, and then you get some bonus videos, exclusive videos, and whatever interesting things I can come up with, and some PDFs and things of that nature, I go ahead and upload it over there for you guys. You can also leave me a virtual tip on Ko-fi if you would like to. It's definitely not necessary. Liking this video and sharing my work means the world to me so i'm so thankful to have you guys here and also i do leave a shopping list on my patreon so if you're interested in all of the supplies that i use and where exactly i get them from like what particular business that they come from i do make a shopping list over there so let's get into the materials that i'll be using okay so i purchased four yards of this eight millimeter vinyl and it is relatively thin so I think it'll sew up really well um, and possibly hold its shape. I'm going for a tent or swing shape, swing style shaped coat or whatever so that way I can belt it if I want to and hopefully this all works out. I'm going with that style because I want to reduce as many seams as possible because I don't want it to have like a bunch of rigid wonky seams, uh, if that makes sense, because the seams will not be hidden because this is a clear coat. So here we have some double fold bias tape in white. I was going to use this, but I decided not to. Originally when I wanted to make this coat, I wanted to use a floral printed bias tape, but they didn't have any in store. You would have had to make it yourself or purchase it online. And I didn't have time for that. But I ended up not going with this bias tape at all. I just left it in this clip so you could know that that's an option for you to cover the seams if you don't want them to like itch you, scratch you, whatever the case may be, um, or you don't want unsightly seams. But I came up with an alternative that I'll share later. Next, I have this Oracle brand permanent vinyl, and I'm gonna use this to decorate the coat later because this is going to be another Pyrex project. If you're interested in seeing my other Pyrex project that I made over Christmas, I'm going to leave a icon or a card so that way you can watch that video as well. Now for the pattern, I'm using Vintage Simplicity 4972. This pattern was made in 1954 and I'm using this house coat pattern because it's the perfect tent shape. It has very few seams. It does have a seam down the back but I'm going to cut it on the fold to reduce that center seam. The house coat is a perfect pattern for a raincoat because it has lots of ease so that way you can put clothes underneath it. I was working with what I had and I was searching for a house coat pattern with a raglan sleeve that's very similar to this, but I did not have one in my stack. So if you have one, please use that over this pattern. You can also make a rain cape and omit the sleeves altogether. Now this is the back pattern pieces, very simple pattern and easy to make. I made this once before already as a house coat and so I know that this is going to be quick work. Okay, so it's experiment time and this might very well be not a great idea, but when I was looking through some vintage ads for raincoats so I could get some inspiration on the styles that they had, I saw that in one advertisement they had a electronically heat sealed seam so it wasn't sewn and then so I'd have my like wood soldering iron thing and I wanted to see what would happen if I burned the seams, if they would like stay together. So here we go. Okay, so I didn't end up going with this method because it started to leave burn marks on the material. 
I do think this would have worked if there was a temperature setting on this, but it just got too hot. So it went past the point of melting the pieces together and started burning the edges. My husband was going to try using a heat gun and pressing the edges together, but I really wanted to get this project started because it was a very rainy week. So I just went on without him. After this, I did some test stitches on the sewing machine to figure out what settings would work best for this material. And I do recommend doing that if you're working with material you've never used before. Okay, so the seams are pretty rough because I burnt them, of course. So that's one reason to not do it this way. And then, let's see. Oh my gosh, they're actually kind, they're actually, like they're together. So that's wild. That's really cool. So <laughs> it works. Um, I don't know. Maybe I can use this method for the facing. Look at me complaining about it and then considering using it anyway. So I didn't end up using that method because again, it just, I didn't like the burn marks, but I did think it was super cool that it was very strong to hold up the seams even when I was pulling them because I knew in theory that it would stick together, but I wasn't expecting it to be very strong at all. Now I'm cutting the back piece on the fold so I can omit that seam. I'm using some scissors that I've now delegated to be a craft scissor, so don't use your regular fabric scissors, but a rotary tool would be the best for this so you have perfectly crisp lines, especially on the bottom of your coat where you won't be hemming it. So here I am marking out the one inch hem and I'm going to cut that off and I'm using a dry erase marker to do this because it, it comes right off of the material. Now it's time to cut out the front of the coat. This coat does not actually have a facing on it. It's folded over at the front, so that does make life a little bit easier because working with clear fabric is a little hard to see. I am starting with the darts at the front of the coat and I'm using a little bit of tissue paper to help the vinyl glide across the sewing machine. I'm also using it on my widest stitch. You do not wanna use small stitches for this at all because all it will do is act as a perforation where it will just tear the fabric so think of a perforated piece of paper in a spiral notebook it will just tear just like that so the tissue paper only works when the pieces are smaller once the coat comes together as a whole it's really difficult so what i recommend you do is literally pull the material through the sewing machine because this clings to itself it clings to the sewing machine and it's going to be really difficult to work with if you depend on the feed dogs alone the three main body pieces are together and the side seams are open. So now it's time to start working on my decals to make this a Pyrex inspired raincoat. So I'm using my Cricut Maker to help me do this and I'm cutting out the Crazy Daisy or Spring Blossom print and this is what it looks like. This is two of them stacked on top of each other. That center line is where they break up and they are about four inches wide. So it'll border the bottom of the coat at four inches. If you are interested in the file to make your own decal like this, you can join my Patreon. You'll also find my decal for the last video where I made the casserole carrier. Now I am using some transfer tape to pick up the decal off of the mat. Take your time with this. You wanna make sure that everything sticks properly and there's no lumps or bubbles. It's easier to do when you're not filming, trust me. I made two versions of the file for this decal, one with a background just in case you want to make your own templates with the image and cut it out by hand, and then one with a transparent background if you wanna use a die cutting machine like me, it's easier to run it through the software. I was running out of transfer tape, so I had to use two pieces for such a long decal, but um, in the perfect world, you'd have a fresh roll and you would do it like that. I reuse my transfer tape, so I only use these two pieces for the entire project. So you can use it more than once. Once the tape is on, you're gonna wanna use your scraper tool or credit card or whatever to really make sure it is burnished on there. And then you pick it up off of the mat and move it over to your raincoat. Now I am putting my decal on the inside of the raincoat. It is waterproof, water resistant. I've used this type of decal on a cup which I've dishwashed before. So it definitely works on the outside but I just figured it would be nicer to put on the inside so it has that added layer of protection. As someone who loves vintage Pyrex but can't afford to have a real deal collection, I have so much fun recreating Pyrex style 
clothing and pieces so I can still have a collection but at my own budget. So this is really fun to do and I'm happy to share it with you guys. So now I'm working on the collar. This is two pieces. When I was filming this, I didn't realize how difficult it would be to see. So I'm sorry if there's not a whole lot of detail. There was just no way for me to really film this in such a way that you could see because I was struggling to see myself. So I'm probably going to add in a clip of me giving you some tips on how to work with this fabric on the very end because there's just no really seeing what's going on here and I'm sorry for that. Once the collar is sewn together then I trim the seam allowance and then I top stitch to make sure it stays flat. You can iron this on a very low setting because uh, you don't want to melt the fabric and definitely use some cotton over the top to protect it but I just decided to avoid that and top stitch instead. This is the point in the video where I felt like this was such a silly video to film and I wasn't sure if I was going to keep this footage or scrap it because this is when I've realized that you not only can you not see anything but this just looks like a jumbled mess like I'm sewing an invisible cloak or something. It was pretty funny to me in the moment because I was just like what am I doing? So now I am attaching the collar to the coat. And you're gonna have to use your imagination here, but the coat is still not sewn up at the side seams, so it's easy to maneuver under the sewing machine. But as you can see, it's clinging to itself, it's clinging to the machine, and you're really gonna have to push this material through the machine or pull it. And you have to be very careful that you have a good gauge on the tension that you yourself is putting on this material because you don't want to accidentally skip a stitch by pulling too hard. But if you don't pull enough, then the stitches won't be long enough they will be very tight and then again they will fall right off it will just cut the material after the collar is sewn i sew the side seams up off camera because i realized if the collar was hard to see that the side seams would be even worse because it's even bigger of a piece so now i am sewing the first sleeve and how i finish the seams on this is i do a flat fell seam i basically sew it at 5 8 seam allowance cut down the seam allowance on one side fold it over and then sew on top. I do not do this with the sleeve because it's impossible to get in there. You do need a free arm sewing machine for this if you want to be able to flat felt all of the pieces. Plus I think a free arm would be easier to work with since some of the fabric can truly hang off the side of the machine and not cling to it. There is no real way to hem the sleeve. There's supposed to be a cuff. So what I'm going to do is fold over the cuff anyway like bring it to the inside and then I'm going to use the decal to tape it down. So the decal will act as both a decorative feature and a feature to hold the cuff in place. And since I use the decal on the inside, it won't come loose on the outside, if that makes sense. So here I am just folding it over and smoothing it out and getting it prepared for the decal. Now it's time for the decal to go on. I don't know if you can tell, but it is folded and on the wrong side right now. So I'm just going to pull that transfer tape up and place the decal on top of the sleeve. If you're not using a decorative decal, I recommend that you cut off the extra fabric for the cuff and then finish the edge with some bias tape. Um, I wasn't going to use bias tape throughout the rest of the coat, so I didn't think that it would be appropriate to add it to the sleeve at this point because then it would look kind of out of place. I also didn't want bias tape exposed to the elements because it would be the only material that would absorb water on this coat and I felt like it would just stay wet for longer. I sewed the sleeves off camera. It was the hardest part of this entire project because you can't really ease vinyl in and I did start to tear one part of the shoulder which I was able to fix by taking in the seam allowance even further than 5 8 so I could get behind the tear. So all in all I would not recommend using this pattern for that reason unless you manipulate the shoulder hole somehow but a raglan sleeve would be way better for this. So here is the tip portion of this video. I used metal heavy duty snaps for this because I already had it but what I would recommend even though they don't look as nice is the plastic lighter duty snaps so you don't have to pull as hard and risk tearing the jacket. Here are the flat fell seams on the shoulders and what I used to seam the entire coat. 
As you can tell from the wonky stitches, it was very hard to work in such a small space with a clingy material. This is why I recommend a Raglan style sleeve because you can work with it open and you'll have more room and space to maneuver the fabric. I really do wish that I would have been able to do a heat seal to the seam so that way it's waterproof instead of water resistant. I also plan on adding metal eyelets underneath the arm for breathability. I just don't have a manual tool for that. I only have the pliers and that wouldn't work for this particular project. So here is the final result. And this is my Pyrex inspired raincoat. And of course I had to put a green dress underneath it. I did consider making a rain bonnet, but this material was too stiff for that. So I'll probably just have to order one offline and then eventually I'll get a bubble umbrella so I can make it match the coat. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Also follow me on Instagram at Serena underscore to keep up with me in real time. Special thanks to all my patrons and Kofi donors. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.